Oh no, it's guilt. Where's my hammer? Photos I'd seen of this model number SRP775K1 pictured the bezel markings in a bronze colouring, and I didn't even notice the gilt detailing on the hands and indices. Bronze is cool, gilt is gauche, the reserve of scoundrels and footballers. I tried to convince myself the gilt is bronze, and on overcast days this is a successful ploy, but sunshine and electric candlelight exposes its goldness. I could move to Glasgow, Paisley Road West of course, where it rains every day, rectifying the issue. But the king would find out and chase me back down south. I can't the new. We don't want art gallery ponces cluttering up God's own city. Returning the watch would have been the sensible option. Instead, I decided to try and overcome my guilt discrimination. A turtle is perhaps not a watch for polite society. In fact, it's a brute. A sovereign ring-wearing school bully that loves his mum type of brute. We didn't go in for bullies at my school. It was a far too egalitarian establishment for that sort of nonsense. The brutishness continues with a 184 gram weight. It's not a flabby pie indulgent weight, rather a solid, sculpted, purposeful presence. Continuing with dimensions I measure, 45mm diameter, 47mm lug to lug distance, 13.3mm depth and 22mm lug width. A solid case back and screw in crown help provide a 200 meter water resistance and fall in line with ISO 6425 certification for dive watches. Huge brilliant white indices and fat white hands against a jet black dial make this the most legible watch I own. And of course the Seiko Lumibrite is excellent. However, under light the hands gilt surround glare, reducing readability. The trapezoidal markers at 12, 6 and 9 provide clear dial navigation, being easily distinguished from the circle indices. The hour and minute hands are functional, but lack finesse. I'd prefer buttons, and of course the second hand should be orange. Here, the second hand counterbalance is black to blend with the dial, but has a loomed lollipop end weight which draws one's eyes making it easy to read the watch 30 seconds out at a glance. The blue Saturday and red Sunday on the date wheel are jarring and unnecessary. Only idiot Team Sky believers require colour coded days. An acrylic crystal protects the dial. Some would say it obscures it with the ease with which it picks up scratches. The bezel has a hollow, unsubstantial action. And is difficult to rotate on wrist. And as one expects, exhibits the Seiko trademark poor alignment. It's not a long way off though. Seiko bracelets are much derided for their lack of sophistication. And this is no different. The clasp, in particular, possessing as much aesthetic merit as a Tracy Emin work. But correctly sized, it's comfortable, flush at joints and is almost silky to the touch and tapers from 22mm to 20mm. Seiko should desist their pin and collar system though. The 4R36 movement, in line with most Seiko movements, is shall we say, loosely calibrated, running at minus 14 seconds a day with an uninspiring 1.2 millisecond beat error. The movement offers hand winding at the first crown position, quick date change at position 2 when rotated anti-clockwise, and quick day change in a clockwise direction. 
Position 3 provides hacking and time setting, though hacking seems superfluous in such a liberally calibrated movement. Even with its large size, the SRP775 wears nicely, the design pleasing my 1970s inclination, and despite being heavy, isn't fatiguing. And although reminding me of the very cool period JPS Black cigarette packet, the guilt offends my sensibilities, resulting in me only wearing it on cloudy days. A car the new. Realman Spock Embassy number one, not JPS Black.